Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, brothers and sisters of Islamic Center of Macon, this is Dr. Awais. I will be talking about Prophet Musa alayhi salam's dua today. It is one of the most commonly recited duas all around the world before any talk is given. So we will start our talk today with the same dua and then we'll go over the explanation of it. Rabbi shrah li swadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatum min lisani yafqahu qawli. O Lord, expand for me my chest and ease for me my task and untie the knot from my tongue that they may understand my speech. We will be starting about this occurrence of this dua in the Quran, a little bit about the background of this dua and then what it contains and where we can use it. So background, this, uh, let's talk about the occurrence first. Um, this dua is located in Surah Toha, that is Surah number 20 in Parah number 16 of the Quran. In Surah Toha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's telling him that we have not revealed Quran to you to cause distress. All the prophets in the past have had difficult tasks and he uses the example of Prophet Musa alayhi salam and he mentions it in, in the same surah that have you heard of Musa alayhi salam when he was called to the mountain? He went there and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him and gave him the miracles of Yadi Bayda as well as the Asa and the snake. And at that time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that you are the chosen one and then asked Musa alayhi salam to go and talk to, to, the, to the Pharaoh and tell him that he's done wrong. So imagine um, what is going on on at that time that Pharaoh is the most powerful person at that time in the world. He, ha he has the rule over Egypt and not only he's powerful, he's tyrannical. He is the one who was after all the kids of Bani Israel. He's the one who caused all the kids to be killed. He's cruel. And then Musa alayhi salam gets in his palace we all know the story, we're not going to go to the, into the details, but he gets into the palace and then raises up in the palace and then in gets to kill a person in that area and then has to run to save his life. Now he's coming back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, go talk to Pharaoh and tell him you've done wrong. So just imagine what is going on and this is the time uh, and just imagine the pride of Pharaoh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in Surah Zukhruf, Ayah 51 and 52. My people, do I not have dominion over Egypt and are these streams not flowing beneath me? Can't you see? Or am I not better than this one? And then he points to Musa alayhi salam at that time. So just imagine this is the person he's going to talk to, a very powerful, tyrannical person with a with a, with a with a very cruel background and then he goes and talks and he's telling him go and tell him that you're doing wrong so this is this is the task that Musa alayhi salam has been tasked with he does not dispute the responsibility that Allah has commanded him uh, uh, of doing this and he accepts this role gracefully he shows complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but still this is a difficult task so here um, uh, Musa alayhi salam asks. There's also a mention uh, in, in different um, works of tafsir that Musa alayhi salam had a speech impediment. Um, we all believe that, uh, and I especially also believe, that uh, prophets are uh, perfect humans and they are completely healthy and they do not have any problems because obviously people will be following them so they need to be perfect they're not been born with any physical infallibility but they're humans too and and can have any physical trauma as well so there is a mention about a story which is not going to go into the details but he may have had a speech impediment but the other side of, of ulama does mention that he may be pointing towards his speech not being clear at that time when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this dua. In any way, he feels the burden of the task to confront Pharaoh and is visibly anxious. At that moment, he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and makes this dua asking for the ability to be confident in his speech. 
So the first part of this dua is Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, O my Lord, open up my chest. This is not literally to mean to open up the chest, but it's rather an expression meaning to give assurance or clearance or confidence, to settle the fears, remove the emotions, and calm the nerves, to make more to make yourself more positive and have more trust and iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Excuse me. Shara Sadr can also be compared to open your arms uh, in English language. When you're opening your arm, basically you're confronting whatever task is with in a pleased and happy way and in an acceptable way so that you have the courage to face the task and be able to accomplish it. Uh, he then continues, Vayasirli Amri. So obviously he's asking that, okay, make my myself better and courageous and then make this task easy for me um, we can see how strong-minded he is um, that he's not causing any excuses he's not trying to escape you know sometimes we find the task very difficult so we find excuses for it and try to exit or have other plans or pray for external forces to come help out but he's not asking any of those he's just saying that oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I know my task is tough but Make my chest open and then make it easy for me. So this is the beauty of this dua that, you know, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make things easy for us. And we are accepting the fact that Allah is in control of it and Allah is in control of everything, whether it's easy or not. We turn to him and ask him alone. Obviously, a thing would be easy uh, in two ways. One is... Either you practice too much and then it becomes easy for you or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it in a way that it becomes easy uh, for us. In the next part, Musa alayhi salam says, Wahlun uqdatum mil nisani and untie the knot from my tongue. Here Musa alayhi salam recognizes the moments where he will be in, the, in front of Pharaoh and he may feel uneasy. In those moments, we all know when we are tasked with this thing, and this is my personal experience of uh, public speaking as well. Um, when you are in front of a large gathering, when you are in front of people who, that you are answerable to or highly ranked people, it actually feels that your tongue is tight. You don't have words, your mind just goes off. Although you have prepared, you have words, but you still forget. Just at, this, at times during this presentation, I might. So, you know, that is uh, uh, what Musa alayhi salam is processing in his mind that although I may plan and I may be talking in front of him, I might not be able to clearly tell him what I wanted to say. So that's why he asked him to untie the knot from his tongue. He, we also need to uh, realize that, you know, when we are faced with such, such a situation, we just need to take a deep breath, stand tall and know whatever happens, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us capable of handling it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran La nafsan illa uh, that is Allah does not burden any soul with more than it can bear um, we need to more develop more trust in 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 in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and trust in the ability in our ability to handle the situation whatever way it comes whatever way it comes to us Obviously, nothing we face in this world is going to be as difficult or as arduous as Prophet Musa salam, had. So, you know, we need to compare our situation with him and realize that that is uh, what Allah has asked us. Um, in the final session, uh, Musa salam, says, Yafqahu Qali, that is, they may understand my speech. Sometimes, uh, you know, when you are telling some somebody something, they can take different uh, meanings of that word and thus he is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives him the power to communicate and express himself freely and clearly causing those who hear his talk to leave with no doubt of the truth. A uh, few uses of this dua are um, obviously it is used very commonly in public speaking um, especially uh, it is uh, used in, ta in, in public speaking when the task is difficult as well. Um, so any task that requires speech, understanding and making communications clear and freely. A lot of times, as I mentioned earlier, 
you are trying to say something and people take a different meaning of it. So you want to make sure that whatever you're trying to communicate is taken in the same spirit as you are saying. So we all uh, should pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us that clarity uh, that we can, when we talk to people, they understand us and, and understand us the way we want them to understand. So with that, uh, I end my talk. Again, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding of the different duas and different surahs and different messages that are in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, make it easy for us to, uh, to take care of things that have been assigned to us. Wa akhirah dawana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Jazakallahu khairan.